Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, more great stories of mass adoption. First up, Morgan Stanley may bet on Bitcoin in a $150 billion investment arm. And this is just good because we're starting to see more older institutions getting into the cryptocurrency game. And on top of that, we've got BNY Mellon support for Bitcoin as a tipping point for crypto, say industry leaders. And we're gonna take a look at a bank over 200 plus years old who's getting into cryptocurrency digital assets and finally embracing it. And then lastly, we'll take a look at two pieces. The elites have set the stage for the greatest economic crisis in history, which I don't believe is actually true. And the very last piece, we'll take a look at three reasons why Theta hit a new all-time high at $3.49. So take a look at all those things, but first take a look at what's on the market. So today we've got to February 15th, 10.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, nice brisk day here in El Paso, Texas. Cold and disgusting. I hate this weather. But uh, hey, here we are. Anyhow, let's see what we got today. Let me blow this up so everybody can take a look at it. So we've got Bitcoin, which took a little bit of a dump last night, which is not surprising. If you're new to the cryptocurrency game, first of all, welcome. Uh, you're here at the right time. Unfortunately, you're going to see these things called dips, peaks, and valleys. And that's what happened last night. Everybody thought that Bitcoin's going to go to 50,000 and then that was going to go to the moon. <laughs> It doesn't work like that. Uh, whatever you think it's going to happen usually does the opposite. At least that's how that's my experiences. But we had Bitcoin now a little recovery at 48.6. I think it was below 48 at one point. So yeah, it is what it is. And that's just how it goes. Ethereum 18.17 tethers tether. Nobody cares unless you're an auditor. Cardano uh, a little bit up uh, 0.87 and uh, doing pretty good things. Polkadot still holding strong at geez 28 dollars. It's pretty good, but it's up five uh, percent. And we just got some people that are up and down, so on and forth. But the big winner, I think, is Theta and also Bitcoin Cash. I was talking to my friend George yesterday, and he actually sold a couple of Ethereum for Bitcoin Cash. I go, why did you do that? He goes, I think it's going to go up. And sure enough, it went up. I was like, did you do TA or fundamental analysis? I'm like, nope, just think it's going to go up. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. See, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And that is exactly what is going on. So also, let's take a look at what the projected range is for the next hour. Uh, look at Komodo, look at uh, Ontology, looks like Komodo next hour could go up 16%, Ontology up 12%, Voyager token, hey, I like that, it's one of my big picks, uh, looks like it go up 9%, Monacoin, Wanchain, hey, Wanchain, I remember that one, it's supposed to be like the next great thing, and then now here we are, so look for those to go up, anyhow, that's what we got in the market, let's jump into today's uh, big top story, shall we? So, first of all, this is interesting to me. And again, it doesn't really matter about what people say or, or what's going on, but it really is to the whole group or herd mentality. So when you have these big older institutions getting in, then it's kind of signals to everybody else to go, hey, it's okay, it's safe, you can come in, you're not gonna get scammed and fleeced for all your money. So when I see something like Morgan Stanley come in and then Mellon, which, uh, you know, sure, the Paul Tudor Jones and the uh, Mass Mutuals, I'm like, great, because this is a signal to people that uh, it's okay, and that means that more people will come in and uh, buy into our market. I like to see that. So what's going on here? Well, Morgan Stanley may bet, may bet $150 billion. So what's going on? So CounterPoint Global, a unit of Morgan Stanley, investment management that's wrecked up wins and mutual fund rankings, is exploring whether the crypto would be a suitable option for its investors. I'll get in that sec. Morgan Stanley's affirmation will put the heft of an almost century-old marquee Wall Street name behind a volatile asset class that's still struggling to win acceptance in much of the traditional financial industry. And this is all true. Uh, you know, it, it, to win acceptance in the financial industry, uh, you know, the, the legacy programs, yeah, that is very true. But um, if you take a look at it over the last 10 years, it's the, it's the best performing asset class of the last decade. So when we have these people come in, it really is an affirmation. But in all honesty, I think some of them were, were, were here before, but I think they couldn't really signal those things either because of filings of the SEC or different legalizations or whatever else. But I think once they come in and they, and they do it publicly, then of course it is a very big thing. I don't think that these industries were like, oh, we should really stay away from it. Even JP Morgan was a bunch of liars. They were like, oh, we're not gonna do anything. And then they were mining it in the background. So sure, whatever. But uh, that is just what it is. So just be aware of, uh, just watch what they do, not what they say. Uh, states here, much of the industry's skepticism centers on Bitcoin's unpredictable price swings and lack of things it can buy more than a decade since its creation. So, so here's the thing. 
when Bitcoin first came out, if you're new, it was a, it was slated as a cryptocurrency. This is why I always say cryptocurrency and digital assets, because a lot of the things that we're going to do for it are not going to be currency. It's going to be a digital asset. So like with Theta, that is great if you want to uh, purchase or to invest into bandwidth because we're going to need so much of it. Uh, if you're into VeChain, well, there's going to be a lot of things that need to be tracked on the blockchain as far as like um, medications and food items and different uh, uh, forgeries and even voting. Who knows? And then for like with Ethereum, we're going to need these things called smart contracts, especially for like decentralized finance. These are not cryptocurrencies. I mean, they are in general, but they're digital assets. So when they talk about here about things that you can buy with it, well, first of all, PayPal is solving that problem. They're allowing Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, um, Litecoin, Ethereum to be part of that. They're going to settle things in dollars, but they're still going to allow you to do for cryptocurrency. But then if you want to talk about the, the store of value narrative that Bitcoin has, you can't buy much with a, with a uh, Picasso or a Jackson Pollock painting, but it's a great store of value if you want to put your money into it. You can't really buy too much with land, but it's a great store of value if you want to put your money into it. it you, you can't too... You, you can't buy too much with the with a 76 whatever take take whatever kind of classic car that you have like like the old James Bond car uh, you can't really do too much you can't sell but it's a great store of value and that's the same thing uh, with bitcoin that's why the narrative is what it is it's a great store of value and it's digital gold i'm not going to go anywhere with a gold token and go give me a grande latte it just doesn't work like that but it's a great store of value and it's a great hedge against the market so counterpoint global led by Dennis Lynch has expanded with a simple sounding mantra of being on unique companies whose market value can increase significantly. And that's what these companies are all looking for, asymmetrical returns. So if they put $1,000 into Bitcoin, they could lose it all. I mean, sure, I guess it could go to zero. You know, we keep saying that stupid phrase, but in all honesty, it's not going to zero. So I'm just going to stop saying it. Uh, but for the asymmetrical uh, return, they know there's a huge upside, right? Where else can you go from almost 50,000 to 150,000, which is what my personal prediction is. Where can you 3X your money uh, in a very short amount of time? Try doing that with a bond. Try doing that in a savings account. Try even doing that with the stock market unless you're getting super risky. It's very tough. So that's why these guys are here. Make no bones about it. The group oversees about 19 funds, uh, of which five delivered gains in excess of 100% in 2020. Ooh, 100%, good for you. We'll do that on a Tuesday. So. Anyhow, this is just great news and it moves a needle. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to the next piece about another older industry getting into crypto.